So far I have showed you how most of the implants work. I was mostly focused on the combat implants, but now it will be time to take a look at the support implants. Now, the support implants are very interesting. They have a very interesting use and can also be applied in PvP. Definitely going to allow for very interesting builds for uh, for the fleets and can also be used for solo PvP, which is a very surprising moment. Now, last time I forgot to show you how uh, the leveling up process looks, so I will actually do that right here, but here you can take a look at all the implants that uh, I have on display here. I will start with remote armor and then we'll go with remote shield. Now first let me actually show you how the, um, how the fitting process looks. Now I already have the level 45 implant so let me quickly go and fit that. And you go here on the upgrade section and basically uh, you spend the neural compliers for leveling, for leveling it up. And yes, this is actually pretty expensive up until uh, level 30, it's actually doable. Level 30 to level 45, yeah, that is quite expensive. And as you can see, you really need a lot of these things to upgrade the implants. I personally uh, hope that this is going to be changed. I really hope that it will be changed in the future. Basically, the cost should be drastically reduced. And of course, as with the combat implants, all the implants, including the support ones, have to be changed, nerfed, because currently, in their current state, they are a little bit too strong. But I believe that they're already working on that. The recent patch did kind of show that they're watching how the implants affect the game, but we will see uh, how that ends up. Now, the Nestor is, I think, the only battleship that has a bonus on remote armor repairs. Basically, the Nestor is a multi-purpose ship. It can be used as a exploration ship. It can also be used uh, as a logistic ship. And, of course, uh, the Nestor can be used as a PvP ship. So, a very very multi-purpose uh, ship. So, how did I uh, how did I imagine to use the nest with the remote armor implant? There was a very interesting idea a while ago with a Nestor fleet, basically a remote repair Nestor fleet that can be used for PvP and this implant might actually uh, make that a reality. Now here you can take a look at the uh, main skill remote armor, basically target under registration effect from remote uh, armor repairs will increase all armor resistance by 10%, 10% max level, and upon skill activation remote armor repairs will restore equal amount of armor for own ship. Here you can take a look at uh, more accurate stats, so 10% extra armor if you activate the implant. Keep in mind, the Nestor is already pretty tanky. Now, the general units are going to be focused on armor repair and remote armor repair, as well as capacity batteries. The combination can be, you know, changed depends on, depending on what you need with the ship. In my case, I wanted to uh, max out the repair capabilities of the Nestor. And so far, I think I did a pretty good job on that. Now, you have to be careful with the general units. You have to make sure that uh, you don't have two of them of the same type, because sometimes the effects can cancel each other out. The rapid closure activation effect for remote armor will increase the armor resistance by 25%. Self armor resistance by 25%. So, yeah. Um, this ship is going to be really, really tanky. Emergency operation, armor support, reactivation, reactivation delay uh, 60 seconds, which is nice. Now the next uh, general units are for remote armor, basically uh, module activation cost minus 26% and repair effect minus 20%. Basically, the effect will cancel out, so uh, I will have to change the general unit 
because currently uh, with this setup I don't have really good remote armor repairs not a lot of you know difference uh, between the default and with the current one because the general units do affect the module and the repair every time the remote armor repair takes effect it will increase the repair mouth for all repairs by 2% up to 25% which equals to 50% if we uh, if we go take the effect into account all of the effect engineering adjustments armor repair effectiveness boost 30% I did pick the first one and the last two units capacitor efficiency and afterburner efficiency now, the last effect, remote damage control, is basically what the name suggests, a big damage control. Increase resistance by 50% and lasts for 30 seconds. And of course, it increases capacitor use for remote armor repairs by 100% during the skill runtime, which is 30 seconds. So you really get a lot of resistances from uh, from the armor implant. I would say you get a little bit too many armor armor resistances from this. And the Nestor, like I mentioned before, is by default already pretty darn tanky. So I think I'll get around 99-98% resistance on this ship. Now let me quickly uh, change the build and show you how the remote armor raster looks. I have C-type large armor, large remote armor repairs, four of them. They repair 455. 36 kilometers is the range and accuracy of 70 kilometers, which is overall uh, pretty, you know, pretty solid. Now let me quickly go to the implants and let me actually show you what I was talking about uh, about the general units cancelling each other out. So I have the one for efficiency and I have one for strength. So if you take a look at the info then you will see that both of them affect each other so uh, basically having those two at the same at the same implant is not going to be very productive. So let me quickly swap one of them out for the capacitor battery which will leave the unit for increased output. Actually this is the efficiency one. Okay, minus 20% armor repair. Let me pull that one out and let me go with the output general unit. It can be a little bit confusing, I know, but you really have to read the description of the unit in order to have a very good implant setup. Okay, that should work. And we have the armor repair output. Okay, 26% extra armor repair, but it will use 25% extra capacitor. Okay, let me just double check everything else. It should be. It should be set and ready. Now let's take a look at the uh, stats on the uh, remote armor repairs. 569 and they use a little bit more capacitor but the overall stats uh, remain the same. So this is why you have to take a look at, take a closer look at the general units in order to maximize the effect. I have dual large group armor repairs. They also repair pretty nice, but they have a very long activation time. They have very good range and they use fuel. So uh, they will not use capacitor, but they will use fuel. Also a very useful module. I have one scrambler and one web. The capacitor lasts 1 minute and 48 seconds. 17,000 gigajoules is the capacitor. 969 seconds is the recharge rate. The armor is looking really good. These are the cold values. The Nestor is built for full tank. And you can only imagine how broken a Nestor fleet will be with uh, a build similar to this. If all Nestors are basically synchronized and if every Nestor repairs the other Nestor in the fleet, 
then every Nestor will have around 95-98% resistances, perhaps even 99, not really sure if that's possible. We'll have to somehow assemble a 50 50 player Nestor fleet in order to test this out and that's going to be a little bit difficult. Now, now let me also show you what else you can do with the general units besides improving armor you can actually improve capacitor batteries you can improve afterburners basically you can improve most of the modules so uh, since the capacitor is a it's a small problem i will go and adjust the general units for maximum possible capacitor points now for some reason the capacitor battery general units don't have a effect that cancel each other out basically you can use multiple general units for the capacitor battery and it's a little bit uh, unexpected because I personally expected you know same thing as with the repairs shield boosters and things like that but apparently the capacitor batteries don't suffer from that problem so you can easily slap both of them and now the capacitor battery will have 2311 gigajoule increase, 4390 gigajoule additional capacitor upon activation, okay, armor, armor repair repair is 2102. Actually, if you have a nest of fleet, not really sure if you will need a armor repair on your ship because you will have other nest of repairing your ship. And the um, afterburner can also be improved. I think I messed up with the afterburner unit, so let me quickly change that. Basically, you can go with the output boost unit. You don't really have to go with the efficiency one. 25 and 26% velocity boost. Okay. Let me find... It's this one. Minus 26% and velocity minus 20%. Let's remove this one and let's slap something else to obtain the full effect of the boost of the boost unit. I will go with well, uh, I think Nosferatu. Actually, remote capacitor. Let's go with that one. The Nestor can also do that. Okay, let's go back to the fitting window and let me show you the afterburner. 256% and of course the use, the activation cost is increased slightly. But the Nestor is pretty quick, this thing's actually really fast. One of the fastest, if not the fastest battleship in the game. Can easily go 3000 meters per second. Now, uh, I would love to show you how broken this is because you can actually use the implant, you can use this implant on your own drones. Basically, you can repair your own drones and that will increase your own resistance by a lot. So, uh, I could get easily around 95 cold resistance on uh, on the nest. But currently, the game is a little bit bugged and as you can see, my modules are not working. So, uh, I guess in the part 2 of the um, logistic implants I will actually show you how broken this is because you can use the repairs on your drones and uh, that will increase your own resistance by a lot so that's going to be that's going to be fun Th that's what I, what I said about this being usable in solo PvP you can increase your own your own stats by repairing your own drones and that is that is really ridiculous, honestly. Okay, so this build focuses on the maximum possible resistance. 328,000 hit points. The cold resistance value is pretty scary, to be honest. And the build is... Uh, the overall fit is made to be used in a Nestor fleet. Four adaptives, one damage control and one afterburner. Again, it will be very ridiculous to assemble 50 nesters just to test this out. Should get 98 to 99% resistance. Basically, the nester fleet, in short, is immortal. Not really sure how you kill a nester fleet that has the implant and has a really tanky build. 
Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, a very... Very scary idea that we might actually start seeing in the in the very near future especially uh, after players realize how uh, how to use the implant and how to use the nestor and of course when the price for the ship goes down now uh, the main problem that you have is the capacitor because overall the modules the ship and everything else does use the capacitor a lot so uh, in order to solve that problem, I will go and tweak out the build on the Nestor. I will change the rigs a little bit and uh, we will see how much capacitor I can get out of the Nestor. I'm pretty sure I can increase the capacitor runtime from 1 minute and 48 seconds to around perhaps 7 minutes. If lucky, if I tweak out the build enough, and if I adapt the build to the implant, I would probably make the capacitor stable. So uh, that's going to be uh, that's going to be fun to to test out and to try out. One minute and thirty seconds, actually. My apologies. Twelve thousand gigajoules is the capacitor, and ob obviously, definitely not capacitor stable. But uh, in a Nestor fleet with the group capacitor boosters, you should uh, have a lot of capacitor in a fleet. Now, you can swap the adaptives into dual capacitor batteries. And this will uh, help with the capacitor a lot. Now it's 2 minutes and 18 seconds. The... My apologies for the weird cut. 72, 75, 76 and 66% resistance on this build. Now, I'm pretty sure that uh, this is already a little bit overkill if we look uh, at, for example, uh, the potential that the build has in a fleet. And we have uh, this build without any afterburner, triple capacity batteries, dual adaptives and one damage control. Now. I decided to keep the damage control just because it does add to the cold resistance value. Now the capacitor lasts 3 minutes and 48 seconds, 19,000 gigajoules is the overall capacitor capacity, but the capacitor can still be improved and uh, I want to try and make the capacitor as stable as possible, so I have swapped the engineering rigs for capacitor rigs and now the capacitor is 5 minutes and 42 seconds 25,000 is the overall capacity with the triple capacitor battery build now I have one web and uh, the scrambler is there in order to hold ships that get close the Nestor fleet is designed to uh, work with all ships in close proximity to each other that way you can easily slow down uh, one moving ship with the other nest battleships. 3 minutes and 19 seconds is the capacitor time with the afterburner. Now this is still, you know, uh, I'm really not happy with the, with the capacitor time. So I have decided to go and equip large Nosferatus on this ship. Now I not noticed that I have a lot of free power grid on the Nestor and I'll definitely take advantage of that. So and now the capacitor is 5 minutes and 48 seconds so definitely a little bit better uh, than before. This is with the afterburner damage control and dual capacitor batteries. Now one interesting thing that you can do with the implants, you can basically equip any general unit that you can imagine so uh, now I will go and replace couple of them and I will uh, add one unit that will improve the Nosferatu strength and that should increase the the capacitor time on the ship quite a bit let me go and find the output boost on the Nosferatu. Okay, 26% extra 
strength, but it will have shorter range and shorter overall shorter range by 20%. Okay, now let's take a look at the Nosferatu performance on the Nestor. Now it's 7 minutes and 12 seconds, okay. So by changing that unit, I I have obtained 2 extra minutes on the capacitor. 290 gigajoule is the energy transfer amount, 19.2 and 11.2 is the range on the Nosferatus with dual capacitor batteries. Now it looks possible to make the Nestor capacitor stable. With triple capacitor batteries and dual Nosferatus, now the ship is capacitor stable. I still have the same resistance and overall uh, the goal was to make the Nestor capacitor stable, so now the ship is stable at around 30%, 35%, something around uh, that. But still, uh, that's with all modules up and running. And this is actually pretty impressive. The DPS is 640.63, but the most important thing about the about this ship is the tank still 328,000 hit points and when everything is set up and running you will have 95 to 98% resistance on this ship and that is honestly very very tanky now with this build the speed will definitely suffer but you don't have to worry because you will have a lot of other Nestor battleships in the fleet supporting you and of course you can add couple command battlecruisers that can also use command burst modules which will further improve the resistances, speed, webs, scramblers, things like that. So um, yeah, uh, we are talking about a fleet that is practically immortal because I'm not really sure how you uh, go and destroy 50 Nasta battleships with 99% resistances. Which is possible with the implants and possible with a build like that. Now it would be time to go and show you the remote shield aspect. Now first thing, uh, I've tried to find a ship for the remote shield, but no battleship has uh, any remote shield booster stats. Basically, we don't have a battleship that can serve as a logistic shield battleship. The Nestor is the only battleship that can be used as a loggy ship. I thought about the Belgorn because it has the Nosferatu overall penalty and overall uh, the capacitor on the Belgorn is pretty good but no, no extra stats on the remote shield boosters so the Belgorn is definitely Definitely, you know, there you can technically use it, but I wouldn't uh, be using a Belgorn as a logistic ship. The Armageddon 2 and the Armageddon 1 both can technically be used as logistic ships, but I wouldn't be using them uh, for shield. If anything, I would be using them for armor. But I have seen some very weird builds lately with the Armageddon, so um, perhaps it's actually possible to make them a shield logistic ship, but. I wouldn't be using them, and the other ships are uh, definitely not suitable for that job. Now we have the Orca, the Orca does have some very interesting stats and overall it is a very interesting ship. And it does have remote shield booster, boost amount bonus and optimal range, as well as a lot of other bonuses, so you can technically uh, use the Orca for remote shield boost purposes, although this is a mining ship, so its main goal should be mining. We also have the the Rorqual, and this thing also has a bonus on a remote shield boosters, which you can see over here, boost the mouth and optimal range, which is nice, but uh, this is also a very big mining ship. I will actually show you how this how this ship looks in the game later on. I actually haven't uh, haven't really played around with the rock much, but I think I will do that very soon. Now let's go to the logistic battlecruisers. We have logistic hurricane and we have the logistic drake. Now these things are pretty good for the 
for the shield boost drop. They have a very nice bonus on on the remote shield boosters as well as remote capacity boosters. And I would personally uh, go with the Logitech Hurricane. These ships can also be used as PvP ships. They have six high slots, five medium slots, and four low slots. And of course, they have the they have a very interesting and very powerful recharge mode, which makes them very lethal in PvP. The Logistic Hurricane can easily go and kill Ashimu cruisers because it can easily outlast its capacitor. Now let's take a look at the roll bonus, plus 300% remote shield booster effective range, plus 5% group booster range, plus 5% group capacitor transmitter effective range, plus 50% 15% remote shield booster, minus 5% remote shield booster capacitor need. Advanced spell cruiser command bonus will give you plus 150% remote capacitor range and plus 15% remote capacitor transmitter effect. Overall, a very solid logistic ship and I think this ship will be a good example on on the shield on the remote shield implant. Let me let me go and swap that real quick. And let's take a look at the uh, stats. The restoration effect from the remote shield booster increased by 50% times lost shield percentage of target, maximum 50% upon skill activation time. The remote shield booster capacitor consumption is reduced by 100%. Activation time 20 seconds, delay 120 seconds, duration 15 seconds. A remote shield recharge minus 100% and additional shield recharge 50%. Overall, uh, yeah, this already looks uh, very interesting on paper. Now, the shield implant can technically be used for solo operations, like the armor implant, and uh, this build here is. The implant build is going to be focused more on the soul aspect. For the level 15, I did choose the PE field. I have to admit, some very funky names going on here. Not really sure uh, why. Level 30, we have Agile EPS. EPS activation delay 90 seconds. Basically, it uh, will reduce the recharge 90 seconds. And enduring EPS activation time for remote shield activation effect extends for 30 seconds. I did pick this one. Basically, the effect will last a little bit longer, but the cooldown will, of course, remain at 120 seconds. Overheating recharge upon skill activation capacity consumption is increased by 500%, and repair effectiveness increased by 500%. It lasts for 30 seconds. You know, looking at these numbers, I just can't help but think. What? Who came up with these numbers? This is ridiculous. 500% extra shield repair. You can boost like a capital ship in a couple seconds. That's wild. That's really wild. But overall, uh, I expect this to be nerfed uh, like any other implant. Again, the recent patch did show that they're slowly putting the numbers down and the implants are going to be balanced out in time. Now, as for the general units, I also focused on basically maximum possible remote shield repair, maximum possible capacitor performance. Basically, uh, very similar to what I did with the armor units. And overall, the idea for the for the shield for the remote shield is uh, very similar to the idea with remote armor. Now for the builds, I have six large remote shield boosters. They repair 1,008 each, which equals to around 6,000 shield recovered every eight seconds. Keep in mind, if I activate the level 45 skill, that goes up to 500%. So uh, yeah, you can recharge someone's shield in seconds with this. The build is, of course, focused on shield resistance. Now, one issue that you will have with this ship is the capacitor. Uh, the recharge mode will help a lot and perhaps the build can be adjusted 
a little bit more uh, for the logistic aspect, perhaps you can technically slap a uh, large capacity battery on this ship or dual medium capacity batteries, depends on what you actually prefer to do on this ship, but I have uh, some capacitor rigs, medium capacitor battery, shield, large shield booster, a reactive shield, uh, not reactive, but adaptive shield hardener, and a afterburner, remote capacitor transmitters have some very nice effect as well, basically, this is a fully fledged logistic ship that uh, is a little bit different from the Nestor, this ship is made to be used in a fleet, so uh, definitely not a ship that can be used in a similar way as the Nestor. The Nestor is definitely uh, very different uh, in this aspect because the Nestor can, you know, create the Nestor fleet and fight with drones. On this ship you only have one drone and uh, that one drone is, you know, not going to do a lot of damage. So uh, the Hurricane Logistic is built to be a logistic ship to the fullest. Now this is the recharge mode and as you can see uh, it ship capacity recharge minus 50% okay now I thought that this goes up to minus 75% minus 75% but uh, I guess I was wrong so it's only minus 50% but unfortunately uh, because the current state because the current, at the current time, the um, the game over here is a little bit bugged and the modules are unfortunately not working. I'm not really able to show you how this exactly works, so I will have to save this for part two, just like for the Nestor. But overall, the idea is to last for a very long time while you repair the shield of your teammates. And overall, uh, the Hurricane Logistic with the current build should work really, really well. One thing that I would definitely change would most likely use group capacitor boosters just because the capacitor on the ship is not that good. Basically, the capacitor is the, is the thing that has to be improved on the Hurricane Logistic. And now, well, uh, I did say that I will show you the, the Rorqual. I haven't seen this ship like at all this is the first time that i'm looking at it in this game and well uh the roracle has a lot of stats and i think i will do a whole separate video on the roracle i have some very funny ideas with it overall uh this is one very very expensive ship that can mine a lot of ore if i the roracle be very careful with it because this thing is very expensive and if someone finds the Rorqual, expect a lot of ships to swarm in the place. Now, uh, as for the other... Actually, when I think about it, we don't have any money implants. That's one thing that I noticed. We don't have any money implants. That's, that's interesting. Of course, you can use basically the same setup for the Rorqual, although... Uh, I think most players would not use remote shield boosters on the Oracle because this is after all a mining ship, but as for the Oracle you can technically uh, use them, but uh, it's a very hilarious idea and I will definitely uh, save that for another video that will be very funny that I plan to do uh, with the Oracle. So that would be that would be it for the short introduction for the logistic implants. This is going to be the part one of uh, the logistic implants. In part two, I will uh, go out and actually actually show you how how broken they they are because currently the game is a little bit bugged and I can't really use any modules. So, with that being said, hope that you enjoyed. Stay safe, fly safe, and I'll see you next time.